You People sound always... like every brain in the world. <laughs> Let me just interject. Stop telling yourself a false story <laughs> and stop worrying. Worrying is paying interest on a debt that may never come due. Wayne, it is so <laughs> good to see you, man. Ditto. Dude, I, like I was just talking about you two days ago because I was watching this like something about crazy chimps. Did you see this thing that's on HBO? I, I love how that's the segue in, into thinking about me. Crazy chimps yep. instantly think of Wayne Hoffman. That is exactly why. So I forget what it's called. But anyways, it's, it's a documentary about this lady who's like crazy about chimps and she kidnaps this chimp. It's a whole thing. It's kind of like the lion or no, was it Tiger King? It's kind of like Tiger huh. King. Um, but it takes place in Sarasota. Oh, oh. And it like shows they interview other people from the circus and stuff. And I was like, just telling my girlfriend, I was like, Wayne might know these people. <laughs> Last time I hung out with them, he's like, yeah, I'm tight with the circus folk. So he could know these people. You know what? I'll, I might actually know those people. I don't know. I'll have to do more research. On it's who not it is. that big of a community. So, dude, thanks for texting me. Yeah, of it, course. It was really cool that uh, that you reached out because I haven't seen you in what two years. It's been a minute. Yeah, I I don't know exactly how long. Uh, maybe two, two, three, two, something like that. Yeah. yeah last yeah. time I I saw you, I drove from my dad's place he was staying at over to Estero, yep. and we you had us meet at this like uh, some kind of bar restaurant or whatever, right? And I remember I'm sitting there. And in the background, there's a huge billboard of your face because <laughs> it's right outside the arena and you must oh, have like consistent arena right. shows, right? Yeah, so yeah. So there's a big picture of your face and I, I could tell the waitress, yeah, I'm just waiting for that guy. Ah, that's and, so funny. <laughs> and you walk in wearing all white linen with your hair not in a ponytail either, <laughs> just like backlit with the sun in your billboard. And I was like, <laughs> who am I friends with? <laughs> I don't, I'm tr still trying to figure out who I am. So I think yeah. we are through through our whole lives. So and when uh, I did fair. the interview, I was listening to that when I was driving because it was like a three hour drive just to come hang out with Wayne today. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> and a good for you for your spontaneous nature and in, in yeah. wanting to do it and taking the trek. Well, and I didn't like there were no plans to record either. Yeah, it was right. just like you just hit me up because as much as I say it on the show, it is true. I do actually end up friends with a lot of the people from oh, the show. You're a nice guy. Well, That's I why. That. You're right. Everybody yeah. that watches you knows you're like a genuine dude. So why dude, not? I, I try to be. Um, but I, on the show uh, last time you were doing pretty much all virtual. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We were in the midst of uh, global chaos. Yeah. yeah. And I, that, that was wild because it was all virtual and that worked, which blow still blows my mind. Yeah. You know, as a mind reader uh, and I do a stage show, you would think, well, you can't, well, how's that going to work? And I, yeah, I created that whole show and it, and, and it went gangbusters globally. I got really lucky. I think uh, being able to pivot really fast and think outside of the box um, a little desperation, you know, added sure. in there. Like, yeah, yeah. what am I going to do? I had a whole world, world tour canceled, so I had to figure something out. But yeah, that was in the midst of uh, performing through a screen. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, well, I mean, you're, uh, it's a very small pond of like your group of people, right? Like totally. if somebody wants to hire an illusionist or a mentalist or a magician of any kind, there's not that many people that are like at the top tier level, right? So if you're the first one who just makes yourself available with this cool thing because you're the first one to do it, you know what I mean? Even if you're only like a month ahead of everybody else, yeah. like, pff, dude, you're the first one to choose. Yeah, first, I got lucky, you know, I, I uh, created the show and then went uh, online and I Googled virtual entertainment. And luckily when you did that, my photo and name popped up first for That's the it. first few months of the whole craziness. So people from all over the world were calling and I'm like, well, how did you, how did you even find out about me? They yeah. just Googled virtual entertainment and I popped up. I'm sure that since changed, but yeah, right when people really needed it, I was right at the top just yeah. organically and it, and it, and it worked. Yeah, but since you have been traveling again, because last time I talked to you, you had texted me because you went to um, Mystic Lake Casino. You're oh, in like Minnesota yeah, or something, yeah, and yeah, I tried yeah. to make it out and I couldn't make it. Um, but how did that transition back into performing go? Because last time I talked to you at least about this stuff, you were like stoked. You're like, I get to be home. I do more shows than ever, but I actually get to sleep in my own bed and be yeah. around my kid. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, it changed. I mean, I'm back to, you know, traveling around the world. This November, I'm hitting nine new countries oh. just in November alone. You know oh. what I mean? So I'm really back on on the uh, on the road. But yeah, you know, everything switched from online and through Zoom and through the through the screen so to speak, and then people slowly started to say, "Oh, we can we can come out now and actually, you know, be real people again. And yeah, it was like nothing, nothing changed. We're right back into live shows. So now I'm back on the road and traveling and touring. And, you know, it's interesting because the grass is always greener, bro. You right. know what I mean? I think as human beings, we have this innate thing to view the positives and negatives of, of, of the world. And, you know, being away from home and being on the road, you know, I live in hotels, you know, there's a downfall to that. But on the same token, you know, being able to do what we're doing right now, yeah. like random stuff, you're, you're, you're meeting new people, you're exploring new places, and there's nothing like that. I mean, if you're listening to this and, and you, you don't listen to anything else, just let me give you some unsolicited advice. <laughs> Figure out a way to travel. And that doesn't mean spend a lot of money. You know what I mean? You can stay in hostels. You can uh, figure it out. Uh, and you can travel around the world for way less than, than you think. But go see the world. Not traveling is like only reading one page of a book. Yeah, I heard that quote and it's, and it's great. Because you get to see the whole world and really explore this giant rock that we're on. Yeah, see, I'm in the, the opposite time frame. Like, we, we were passing ships <laughs> where I was traveling all over the country, not really internationally for it, although I've been to a bunch of countries, I think 11 now or 12 or something. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, for somebody who doesn't do traveling for a living, like, right. I feel pretty good about that. But but when I had interviewed you in the first place, I was really traveling around quite a bit. I mean, I interviewed you in Florida, right? right? And I was going to LA all the time, um, especially after that, because you had connected me to a bunch of really cool people, which... So many stories branch from the Wayne Hoffman tree. Um, <laughs> but I was traveling all over the country. And then I did a bunch of interviews in New York. I did some down in Texas. I was like kind of popping all over the place. And then I decided I didn't really want to. I was like, I just kind of want to be in my zone. And part of that was like business. Like I had, I was trying to figure out how to make it more financially stable and reaching out and working with brands. Like eventually I figured out I have to work with larger brands for this, like realistically to work. Cause they're the only ones who have marketing budgets. Right. But I have to figure out where the niche is. And my show's not niche enough. And mm. I don't want it to be niche because otherwise I would get bored. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's your uh, show. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so then I started pitching to Quick Trip. And the the response for one was they were like, well, we don't sponsor any podcasts. I'm like, that's fine. But like, I could be the first one. Right. Um, but then they were also like, yeah, but like a lot of your audience is in California. And we don't have gas stations in California. They have like 1,200 stores or something. You know what I mean? Quick Trip is like a massive company. Right. But they're only Midwest. And so I started thinking like, well, how how can I make this work? And I realized we were having huge people come through the Midwest all the time. The difference was before, like when I met you, only people I interviewed were people I was being connected by somebody else to. Remember? Right. Organically. Like, yeah, right. exactly. Totally. But it wasn't people I just DM'd. Right. It was like, word I of didn't, mouth. I didn't reach out to you directly. Somebody else did. Right. Um. But I had gotten to this point where I was established enough that I could just reach out to people. Totally. And people are actually responding to my DMs. And I was like, oh, I don't have to go to California at all. I can right. just like stick in the Midwest. And I've been really enjoying just staying here. And now when I do go traveling, it's like just vacation. Right. And that, I think that's, uh, that's the ultimate. That's yeah. how it should be. Traveling when you want to, not because you have to. Yeah, good for you, man. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've been following your progress and it's been awesome to see. Yeah, dude, we've been yeah. buddies for a long time on the gram. And I was, so I was listening to the interview when we were, I was driving here because it was like three hours, not the, not the interview, but the drive. Um, our interview was over an hour, which was a long one for back then for me. Yeah, I remember you said it was a longer one. Yeah, yeah. 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 In it, um, and since when I had talked to you, I know you were trying to do like a TV show, like you're trying to get that set up. I know at one point it was so, <laughs> so rad. You had texted me and you were like, hey, can I ask you podcast related questions? I was like, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> and me and you just like had a Zoom meeting over coffee for an hour talking about podcasts. So yeah. I know you had like a bunch of different things. You were kind of in the works of like where you wanted to go with stuff. Has all that totally been put on pause because you're traveling again? No, no, not at all. In fact, uh, some great news. Uh, I did put things on pause, but... Um, it, maybe this is a you heard it here first uh, thing because I don't think I've publicly said this to anybody. Uh, I'm currently working with a production company 
uh, and the sizzle reel is currently being edited, and we are now officially with some major players um, uh, pitching uh, my show. Mm -hmm. I have everything lined up, and now we're right now uh, going to uh, start selling it. So wow. we're looking for a buyer. Wow. Yeah, we've progressed far enough that we're we're now there. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. So by the time you're watching this or listening to this, maybe you'll be able to go on and watch the show. Dude, yeah. hopefully. Although yeah. this will come out super quick, I bet. I'm like way more <laughs> on top of it now. because He doesn't mess around. No, no, no. Well, before when I interviewed you, I was doing seasons. Like I was recording 10 episodes at God. a time and I was editing the whole thing and then I would roll them out. So it took a long time. And I like kind of purposely didn't ask anything that was time sensitive for that reason. Um, but I've changed, like moved away from that. For one, I'm not balancing as much anymore. Now it's like, I still like, actually since I did the interview with you, I told you I painted. Now I like do that for a living to a certain degree. Like I painted a bunch of large murals and stuff, which is dope. Um, but I closed my skateboard shop, not not in a sad way. It was, it was awesome. It was over 10 years of my life and I was Solved just kind of like, ready to go to the next thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. But this is like my full-time career now, so I have a lot more flexibility with it. And I don't, I'm not flying out to one location like LA and trying to pack 10 episodes into one week. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I can do them kind of more organically as this person comes through or as this person comes through or as Wayne texts me because he's in Wisconsin for no reason. <laughs> um, so this will probably, probably come out... Um, a lot sooner than it has in the past. Oh, okay. Well, then uh, uh, maybe maybe if you're watching this a year after it came out. <laughs> what about the book thing? Yeah, you had talked about maybe writing another book. Have you written another book? I haven't. I, I have. I, I haven't published it yet. But oh. yes. Uh, so I I'm constantly in a state of creative flow. I find this. I don't know if I need to be diagnosed with some type of ADHD super creative issue, but I'm always constantly making things, creating things, writing things. It's just like, I'm, I'm always doing things. I have, and I think, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you kind of have to have that in you. You have to have that uh, hunger to create and do because you, you know, if you yeah. rest on your laurels and you just sit there and you don't engage with the world and you don't get into a state of creative flow or business flow, nothing happens you're creating your universe uh so yeah that's that's on that's that's in the works as well <laughs> somebody uh, kind of i forget how they worded this um but they basically told me and I, I loved how they explained it was the universe gives ideas and they they like place it in the brain of this lucky individual right but the universe knows if you're not going to act that idea out it's going to take it from you and it's going to give it to somebody else. Yes. And you that's not wait so many times <laughs> to me, bro. So many times. I'll, you know, what? I'll tell, I'll tell you, uh, in, uh, let me do some quick math. Let's see. 1997, I, uh, invented, if you will, uh, the concept of wearable tech for fitness. Um, I, I invented and sketched out a shoe that, cause I thought people like keeping track of how far they run on a treadmill, but people don't want to be inside. What about a shoe that keeps track of how many miles you run? So I built the shoe, I actually had the prototype, went to a company to build it, but the money that, and this is many years ago, I, I, I was barely performing and making zero money. I didn't have any money. And the the amount of money it would have taken uh, to produce this and create it, I didn't have. And I didn't know how to get uh, uh, investors. And the concept of wearable tech, you know, uh, for fitness, uh, you know, I just let it sit on the shelf, didn't do anything with it. And then right after that, I think shortly after that, Reebok came out with a shoe and now we have Fitbits and all this stuff. Um, <clears throat> television shows, you know, uh, hidden camera magic TV shows. I came up with that concept in the early 2000s and I registered it with the, the Writers Guild and, you know, and then I just didn't do anything with it. And I mm -hmm. sat there and, and then, um, you know, Michael Carbonaro uh, came out and awesome show. You know, if you've ever seen the Carbonaro effect, great show. And I'm glad he did it because he did it well and he's thriving. But it's like these things, you're right. All these concepts and all these ideas are in the ether. They're floating out there and they, they're popping into people's brains. Someone listening to this and watching this right now has an idea and they're passionate about it but they're not acting on it do it do something make a phone call today send an email about it do like do 
It's you got to do. That's the 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 mega step that people they live. We, we like living in our brains. Yeah. It's a nice, comfortable little thing to keep ideas. But man, you got to do it. You, the first person to do it is the winner. <laughs> yeah, dude. Every time, and you you don't have to know what you're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing, anyways. Especially when it's like a new idea. There's a reason no one's doing it because nobody knows how right. to do it. So you're gonna stumble and kind of like mess up on some stuff. But like you'll be the first one doing it, so you'll look like a rock star, anyways. And you'll still be the one who succeeds in it. You just like actually have to do the thing. Which man, you changed my life, Wayne. Like as Ooh, far me? as yeah, dude. Wow. As far as like I, you have to be the person that I like the as. All the guests I've had, which I think there's 157 full length episodes out, but I've done a whole bunch of other shorter ones and stuff too, and like bonus ones. So definitely over 200 people. Of all the people I've interviewed, you're the one that comes up in conversation on the show more than any other person. Like consistently, wow. I bring you up all the time. Dude, wow. It's, you're just like, it, it, I think everyone needs to go read that book. Oh, wow. For one. Thanks. Like in, in the previous interview we did, you mentioned, or you mentioned your book, Mind Candy, right? That's, That's what right. it's called. And it's yep. still available to download kind of anywhere yeah. as well as your website. Yeah. If you search Mind Candy Wayne Hoffman, it'll pop up. Yeah. yeah. And the book focuses on techniques to kind of help you with your personal and professional life, like changing your mindset and everything on all these things. You really did that for me. Like, Wow. Awesome. The, you were the, your interview was the last time. And I don't know if this was just some magic you pulled on me or what. Was the last time I was ever nervous for an interview I've never been, and I, and it was from like driving to your place. I was like nervous about it. Cause I'm like, I don't know this dude. Yeah. He's really successful in his own sphere. And I pull up and there's like a gated community. They got to scan my driver's license. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, dude, this is pretty wild. But from like the second I walked into your house, I was just like calm. And then the interview was awesome. And since then I've just never been nervous for an interview, but like, ever. that's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's great, man. And then I think, but notice what you did. You, you, you were, even though you were uncomfortable and nervous, you were still engaged in it, kind of pressing back to what we, we said. You got to like live in the discomfort. You know, you got to, if you're passionate about something, I think that's the thing that carries you through the rough times is living through that uncomfortable nervousness and the, the not knowing. But man, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you did. And I'm glad after that you eased into it. Uh, and, and again, I think anybody that listens to you there's like this doesn't he have like this comforting voice <laughs> like this nice genuine comforting voice just chilling talking you know what i mean so so i, I think you know you kind of just being yourself and easing into it you know uh is the thing that's taking you so far i think a lot of people um are just like following along with my journey of learning because I'm learning so much from everybody that I interview. You know what I mean? It's like my, almost like in a video game where your skill points from all these different <laughs> zones, like just keep adding up. And I feel like everyone who listens to the show and now watching it, that's like by far where most people come from at this point. They're just kind of like gaining those skill points as I'm gaining yeah. those skill points. You know what I mean? It's just great. because like, I'm curious, you know? And one other thing that you had told me, and this one wasn't on mic. This was when we were hanging out, um, when you look like Jesus, <laughs> when we were, when you're in Florida, um, I was talking to you about like where I wanted to go with the show and in life and you interrupt, like you cut me off and you're like, no, you're already there. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, you're already the biggest podcast in the world. Stop mm. talking about that. You need to be the person that you expect to be in the future and that will attract it. And I yes. really think like changing my mindset on that has drastically shifted things in my life pretty significantly. And I've given that same advice. I always credit you. No, <laughs> but well, I've thanks, given man. that same advice <laughs> to so many people um, that I've come across over the last several years. That's awesome. Yeah, I think the key phrase is don't move toward your goals, come from your goals. That's how I phrase it specifically when I tell people that. It's um, don't say one day I'm going to be a blah, blah, blah. How, like, let's say, um, I don't know, a famous podcaster with a big pod. Well, don't say I'm going to be, I'm just a small town guy working my way. No. How would a mega podcaster act? What would they say? What would they do? What types of conversations would that person have? And then just do those things and you instantly bring your future self into the present. 
you know, we could get all philosophical and get into quantum physics and talk about time and whether time is real, but you're li- you're living a dual reality. You're living your future self and your present self, and you blend them together. So don't say one day I'm going to be, say I am. Very powerful shifting. Uh, uh, and well, all that does is it really just acts as a catalyst for change. Because let's face it, if somebody does a podcast for 80 years, yeah, their following is going to increase, typically. Yeah. Mathematically, the probability is it will. But uh, <clears throat> when you when you start being the thing you're uh, uh, wanting to be in the present, it just speeds things up. You don't have to wait the 80 years. Yeah. It just it, it happens much, much faster. So cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm just sitting here talking you up. Uh, going to <laughs> what you had just said, how are you – changing and developing into who Wayne's going to be or who he already is two years from now? Well, uh, like I said, the, the, the only goal, this is, this is kind of really weird to say, but the only goal that I hadn't achieved that I set up mentally for myself was the show. And now we're here, we're selling it actively. Um, so, so by even just talking about it right now and, and, and doing the things I need to do in order to create it, um, uh, I think I'm at a point, it's it's interesting because we always talk about the future. One day I'm going to do this and then, you, okay, well, then I make these actions toward it. But as you're going along, and I don't know if this is the, uh, true for your case, you start to learn more about yourself and what you want. And you also learn what you don't know. Because for, for instance, I never realized the, the in-depth financial things that are involved with growth. You know, most people, you live a certain way and that's your lifestyle. But once things start happening and you start owning multiple businesses and you have things moving, like you have to learn new skill sets. And I'm at the point now where I'm looking to other people and mentors because I'm also mentoring other people. I'm, right. I, and it's crazy because I'm mentoring people that are doing they want to do $20 million exits on their company and I'm shifting their minds to do 40 million exits, Uh, you know, and I'm mentoring them. But at the same time, I'm looking to learn and grow new skill sets that I didn't even know that I needed to know as I, as I grew personally and professionally. One thing that I did learn, and and I'll share this with all all of your listeners slash viewers is um, a great quote by a guy named Jim Rohn. It's, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm starting to realize, you know, my career set and I've reached all these goals and I'm doing my final big goal. Um, but learning new skill sets for emotional development, uh, business, finance, and I'm looking for people that are better than, than me at those things. And I think, uh, again, when you find people that know more than you and you can get a mentor, um, and I'm not saying spend $100,000 with some guru. I'm talking about find some dude who's a real person in the trenches that has walked the path you're walking, and it could be related to anything, fitness, mindset, finance, uh, how to, how to, like, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that love what they do, but they have zero business sense. Yeah. Like they, they, they don't know what KPIs are. They don't know, you know, find, find mentors to help you. So that's, that's where I am in my journey. Isn't it hard for you to find mentors to help you when you are at the top of your, I mean, I know you look outside of magic then, but I'm just saying like when you're kind of at the top of your peer group, not saying you singularly, but you're on the same playing field as these people. It's not like you just call up like the next big, biggest magician and say, how have you built a bigger empire? Right, right. Yeah. So, so for me, I found that, you know, with my job, particularly, it allows me to meet a lot of different people and a lot of different walks of life. You know, I'll go in the hood and hang out and have a good time and, and be fine, but I'll also network with billionaires and trillionaires like actual literal billionaires and trillionaires and they're on a whole nother level you know their 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 lives are completely wild and like the self development stuff they're doing is just like i didn't know about that and again that's kind of how i got exposed to it um <clears throat> but if if i'm looking to grow i'm not looking at the people that 
are where I am. Right. You actually have to be proactive and go to hunt down people and social circles of people that are way far ahead of the game than you are. And yeah, it takes a minute because we're all, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You know, I'm going to hang out with people that are like me, but you really got to, you know, get out of your comfort zone. You got to, like you, like we mentioned earlier, step into that discomfort of like, wow, I'm, I'm about to walk into a room with 80 billionaires. I've never done that before, I, you know, and what is this going to be like? Uh, and from there, have no fear, you know, because it can be intimidating to talk to somebody that you know knows more than you. Um, but, yeah, that's another thing that I heard recently. It was um, uh, never – how did it go? It was like never be the smartest guy in the room. Sure. Hang out in rooms where people know more than you because you're going to learn, yeah. you know. I think a lot of people struggle to have that humility because they don't want to feel stupid. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? So they don't like to surround themselves by people that know way more than them. But like, I guess I didn't really intentionally do that with the show. With the show, it was more like I was interviewing my peers, especially at the beginning. It was like other business owners that I knew. So we were all kind of on the same playing field. You know what I mean? We were yeah. re- literally working in the same space because we were all like entrepreneurs downtown and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but then as the show grew, it was like, well, naturally I want to interview people that are higher up in their different things, you know, NFL players or pro snowboarders or what, you know, whatever. Totally. And as I was doing that, all of a sudden I found myself surrounded by people like you that are just like on a totally different playing field, not even in like the same tower, like just off in their own thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? That are really successful. And that's how I've been able to learn from all these people. But for me, I feel like it's been, I mean, one easy because it's a natural thing. Like, I'm just reaching out and saying, hey, I want to interview you. I'm not, like, reaching out, DMing Wayne Hoffman and saying, hey, I really want you to mentor me. You know what I mean? It's just, like, it kind of happens naturally where those those connections, like, grow in that kind of a way. Um, But because they're not in my same, like, zone, I guess for myself, I don't feel dumb. Because I'm, like, in what I do, I'm really successful in what I do. And I know a lot about what I – what if if I were to take one of these successful people, you being an example, and put you in my space – I would still feel like I know more about what I'm doing than you do totally. because this is what I've been doing. You know what right. I mean? But I think a lot of people, they don't have that luxury. It's like they don't know how to reach out to these people in the first place. And the only people that they could potentially get connected to are people that are more successful in their space. And then there's that whole like like question of, well, what is this guy's motive? Like a lot of people aren't ready to open up because they don't think people are genuine. Because You people sound are always... like every brain in the world. Yeah. Let me just interject. Stop telling yourself a false story (laughs) and stop worrying. Worrying is paying interest on a debt that may never come due. Why are you doing that? It's self-sabotage. We all do it. I I still do it. Um, It doesn't matter. And it's fake. And it's your brain trying to protect you, which is fine. That's good. Good job, brain. You, You have to turn that off and just reach out to random ass people and say, Hey, uh, you know a lot and I want to learn from you. Would you please teach me and send that email and be okay feeling weird and not knowing, and you don't need to know the, the, the technique or the protocol or worry about what they're going to think of you. And I think that's what we do. We, we tell ourselves, well, this person's going to think I'm weird and, oh, well, what if he says no? Well, then you're back where you started. Right, yeah. And you didn't lose anything. Um, so, so yeah, I think, you know, you, you really just got to stretch your, your, your muscle. I mean, think about it. With AI and technology the way it is, you can craft a really nice email and you don't even have to think anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. hey, AI, I want a mentor and I don't know how to write an email. Whip one up for me. Mm-hmm. And then read it and, you know, maybe maybe it'll, it'll, it'll help you. But I think, you know... You know, thinking about first defining exactly what you want, like who do I want to be and what would that person want to know or have to know in order to be that? And well, now who knows that information and then just reach out and do it without hesitation. You know, don't be don't don't you know, make sure you you spell your words correctly. Do, you know, check your grammar and all that. But yeah, stop telling yourself a false story. You know what I mean? I, I think we're all too heady, man. Yeah. We, li- we live in our heads 
And, and, and I think, again, going back to what we said earlier, getting out of your head, doing things, reaching out to people. Um, and if you don't know, then, then find out who is the smartest person that knows about X, Y, Z. You know, just figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, there's a lot less people. Like, I feel like people have this idea that Mark Cuban's getting like a thousand people like sending emails to his, his staff or whatever every single day saying, please mentor me. And that number is way less than you think it is because totally. everybody else is thinking the same thing you are, which is like, oh, I could never like that would never work out. Totally. The chances are so low, blah, 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 blah. I don't think a lot of these people really get that many like requests. So if it's a ge right. genuine request, like your chances are probably a lot higher than you think they are. They're higher than you think they are. But even if they're not, yeah, who cares? If, it, if a thousand people are writing an email, be number one thousand and one. You're giving yourself an opportunity, whereas if you don't shoot your shot, you're, you're definitely not going to get any more information. You're not going to get the help. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, I always bring up is people say, oh, you, you did Masters of Illusion and Fool Us and you were on the Ellen DeGeneres show and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, cool. And they, well, how did you do that? How, like back in the day, Ellen, you know, when she was on air. And I got on that show, all my friends and colleagues were like, how'd you get on there? And the answer was, I called them and asked to be on the show. And I, they were like, I would love to be on Ellen. I'm like, did you ever call? And they're like, well, 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 no. <laughs> well, there's a novel idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not as hard as you think it is. Again, it's part, part of that, that false story. We, we think, like you said, these big, uh, you know, uh, millionaires or successful people or whatever are being bombarded. And surely I'm, I'm certain they're getting more calls than we are, you know, sure. about business deals and stuff. But at the same time, um, you're, you're, you said it, your, your odds are better than you think. So yeah. ask, man, this universe is a, is a playground, man. It really wants to give everybody everything. It doesn't feel that way, and that's the trick. It's all a mental. It's all a mental game. Once you realize it, it's called pronoia. It's the belief that the universe is working in your favor. It's the opposite of paranoia. I believe in pronoia. I believe that the the universe is conspiring to help me at all times. And now, once I kind of shift my mindset into that, and I go, "Wow, right now I could ask for anything." I'll, I'll give I'll give everyone watching this a challenge. Okay. I want, this is, and I know you're listening to this or watching this and you're like, oh, not, you know, I'll do it. And then you don't do it. Do this. Actually put it, maybe not now because you're listening to this or watching <laughs> this, but put this on your calendar. Take out your phone. We, you know, open up your calendar and pick a random date about a week from now. I, pr by the way, if you're watching this and listening, I promise, listen, I'm going to make a bold statement. I promise right now, I promise right now. Anybody that's listening to this collectively, all the, the all of you watching this and listening to this, value will be a, a great, a lo very large, uh, it might be monetary, but there's going to be major, major value pulled from what I'm about to say from everybody collectively. I guarantee that I will guarantee on everything. A week from now, put in your calendar, collect five no's, pick a specific date. And your job on that date is to ask for five things. And it could range from a free cup of coffee from the local coffee shop all the way up to ask your uh, idol, whoever you idolize, the person that's in your field or you, the, somebody you really lo love and want to connect with, find their, their executive assistant or their manager or whatever, and ask to meet them or have a Zoom call with them. You know, something you think is impossible, but put on your calendar a, on a specific date, a week. Don't do it anytime soon. You want it to kind of pop up on your calendar as a surprise. Like, oh yeah, that, that, that Wayne guy was talking about this and ask for five things. And you could pick a number, ask for 10 things. You're going to feel nervous doing it. You're going to be in line. You're going to order your coffee. And at the end, you're going to say, um, I, thanks for making this coffee. Hey, weird question. Uh, I'm doing an exercise. Would you be willing to give me this cup of coffee for free? They're going to say one of two things, yes or no. If they say no, you're back where you started. If they say yes, which I guarantee you, you're going to get a lot of yeses. And that's the whole point. You're going to get way more yeses than, than you think. And it's going to change the energy. Again, pronoia. 
the the universe wants to give you stuff, but you have to be willing to ask for it. Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie The Secret? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I, I was just talking to. Um, are you familiar with Greg Lutzka? Uh, the name sounds familiar, but I'm not so sure. He's like by far the most famous skateboarder from Wisconsin. He was like the, as far as like pro skateboarding goes at one point, he was the first skateboarder to be sponsored by Toyota and Visa. And like, he was one of the first people in skateboarding to like get sponsorships outside. Now I know of, who you're talking about. You know what I mean? Yes. And at the time he like got a lot of hate for it or whatever, which was so silly. Cause like his bank account now he could retire if he wants to. And he just like doesn't you know but anyways i was hanging out with him recently and like i would call him a mentor and a friend super nice dude actually he was just talking to me and i guess maybe i'll have to cut this out maybe i won't i might be in his new tv show cool yeah i'm like dude That's i want to be awesome. on tv i've been trying to be on tv for so long yeah um but i had so many people because i grew up skateboarding everyone in wisconsin who skateboards knows who he is sending me messages when my interview with him came out and they're like i how in the world did you get him it's like dude i dm'd him Right. Like, that, it really didn't take that. And you know what? And it's not even just people, like, and, and even way more famous than that, Lamorne Morris. Like, I had interviewed him from New Girl, and now he just won his first Emmy uh, for the show <laughs> Fargo, I think is the one that he won his Emmy for. Um, I, I interviewed him not long after interviewing you, actually, hmm. um, which is one of the crazy things was, like I said, seeing you, that was the last time that I was nervous going to an interview. It was literally, like, a few weeks later I interviewed Scott Lips, who owns Lips LA. It's a talent agency that represents like Lizzo and Gucci Mane. And like, he's like very famous and successful. Um, straight from interviewing him, got in a car, went to Lamorne Morris's house and interviewed Lamorne. Right. Awesome. So crazy because my show was like really not that big of a thing at that point in time. But Lamorne told me when we weren't on like recording that he said yes before through DMs for like people like high school kids. For yeah. their podcasts and interviews. Like, yeah. You know, it, people only see whatever a successful thing on TV. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. they're like, well, I could only get a hold of this person if I was on the level of whoever this other person I see on TV with them. Not true. But yeah. They, they, they don't Fake. exclusively talk to those people. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. Dude, there's so let, much let, more available. Here, here's the best way to, to do to, This is something I say all the time. Uh, I say, think about like the person you idolize the most and think is untouchable. I mean, th take take a second, actually think like who's the who's somebody who's really like high up that now picture them sitting on a toilet, taking a dump, eating a ham sandwich. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they're just a person. They have a cell phone number. They eat. They have problems. You know, they yeah. they, they, they 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 it's a human being. Yeah. These aren't untouchable people. You know, you have access to the entire world. You just got to know how to do it. Yeah. You yeah. know? Well, and since since then, like, I've gotten to a point, not only am I interviewing people, like, in the Midwest, which is really beneficial for me because it works with the brands and it's, like, more sustainable and I don't have to, like, go anywhere and whatever. But now I'm just, like, interviewing people I'm a huge fan of all the time. Awesome. It's like I've, I've got and I got to like get out of the habit because I'm interviewing way too many musicians right now. Um, but like <laughs> I get the notifications from Spotify that's like, oh, a concert near you. And I just like DM them. And I've been getting a hold of so many art, like my all time favorite music artist, Sunreal. He was um, he's from Vancouver. Uh, he's like a, a rapper, singer, songwriter. He kind of does some folky music as like well with hip hop. But anyways, he had posted on his um, Instagram, like first international tour since before the pandemic or whatever. This was last year in Minneapolis was listed. DM'd him like, hey, would you do this? Like big fan, grew up skateboarding, own a skateboard shop, whatever. And he's like, yep. And then interviewed him, you know what I mean? And then it, I had a great time. I hung out with him like the whole day. He let me like kick the whole time. He's coming back to Minneapolis now in November. And like we've been Instagram buddies ever since. So it's going to be just like this. Yeah. I'm going to go get to hang out with him. And all it was is a DM. Well, let's, let's switch from the topic. So I've been in this space now with my show where you know, for a long time I was saying, I'm, you know, I think I'm the biggest show in my area. Like I kept saying that. Like I, I got, well, actually what I would say is, I don't know if I'm the biggest. There's got to be somebody bigger than me. I just assumed. I don't know why I like put myself down in that kind of way. And I, th it, I think it was after talking to you that all of a sudden I flipped it in my mind and I was like, nah, I'm the biggest one. Like yeah. I'm, I'm the top dog in this area. And now like as, as far as what I interview people about, like this type of thing, I'm pretty darn sure I am the biggest one in my part of there the you go, country. Man. I'm, if, I, if there was somebody, I should be aware of them by now. But yeah. it's put me in a position now where I'm working with like all these different organizations and venues and stuff. And if anybody's coming through, if they're willing to do an interview, I'm like the person to do it. 
it's pretty dope. Um, but because I've reached that that point, I don't have a ton of peers that are doing stuff similar to me on a similar level or bigger. And so it's, I don't want to say it's making it difficult for growth necessarily, but I don't know who to turn to, to ask for advice, to be able to improve. You know, I ask Mm. other people, but like, there's nobody who's doing better in what they're doing that I can get a hold of that can really give me direction. You're kind of in that space trying to make this TV show. Like, who yeah. you, t- you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're trying this new thing. You obviously know how to do production stuff. Like you know how to do what you're doing. Never made a TV show before. And I don't think it's that easy to ask somebody else who's doing a TV show similar to what your TV show is going to be about. So how are you navigating? That? Yeah. Yeah. So it's trailblazing, man. Yeah. You're going into the wild unknown. And, and that's what I think drives people who have an entrepreneurial spirit and a passion to be able to do it. Because, you know, it's like running through the pitch black night and you're you might run into something you don't know what's coming uh and and, but the love for it because you you know i assume that you're engaged you and you appear to really enjoy it like hanging out and interviewing people it's you know so so it's that passion kind of drives you through it for me you know there's certain skill sets and certain like contractual things like You know, uh, should I own my IP, the intellectual property for my show or do I need, you know, navigating those things. And there's people that have walked the path of selling a magic or mentalism themed TV show in the past or um, a, a person who had IP that created the show. So I can ask those questions. And in, in your world, you know, there's certain technical aspects. Hey, what type of microphone do you use? Hey, do you have any um, suggestions on this and that? So you can find those those things. But at the end of the day, man, is if, if you're really creating something in uncharted territory, you, you really are the person making it and creating it. If you think about this, <clears throat> all of the things that exist – the language we are speaking right now, somebody created this. Like, this is created by humans like bef- that lived before us. Uh, the automobile, um, math, uh, the, ba- the light bulb, the basics of, of the structure of the world as we know it was some, like Thomas Edison, just chilling in a room, figuring it all out, having no idea. Well, how do I have a light bulb now? Well, how do I sell this? Where do I go? And really, at the end of the day, you're making it up. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. I think people put a negative spin on it because of that uncomfortable unknown. As humans, we have fear of the unknown. That's what keeps us um, safe at night from predators, not going into the unknown. But but that's also where the greatest things in the world are created. Yeah. Well, I think people, they're so, like, they're, they're so afraid of what can happen in a negative way when they try something new, you know, especially Mm -hmm. if they don't have like a mentor to kind of help them along to do this thing. They're so worried about like, yeah, but this could happen. It's like, yeah, but like, something else could happen. Yes. That's the switch. Yeah. Yeah. And and the feeling that you get from when this thing does work out is worth chasing, you know, but I think just not enough people focus on that. They just look at the negative and you can't get to that positive space if you're looking the other direction. That's it. You nailed it. And, and the, the, that's why I said earlier, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. I can find the best microphones. I can find the, the, the best laptops. I can find the best cables and switches and camera, but I can't find the inner strength to think in a more positive way versus a negative way without coaching, help reading tutorials videos mentors you know what i mean and that's the that's the biggest thing that i'm i'm really discovering now is how important it really is to 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 kind of like grow in in that way you know because all the other stuff will fall into place you know you do what you love money will follow do what you love you can learn the tech stuff you can learn the the physicality of it like i can pretty much in today's day and age learn how to do anything if i wanted to learn coding i could do it if i wanted to learn broadcast journalism i could become a computer repair technique i can learn these skill sets but to have the wherewithal and mental fortitude to 
run into the darkness creating a show that's never existed or in your case creating a brand new podcast with a whole new outlook and a, a whole new path you, you know you have to have a it's a skill set you have to learn it's a mental skill set yeah well and thinking about like how you were talking about you need to collect all these no's i think another thing i guess this is relating to skateboarding is people are afraid of getting hurt but they don't they don't know that it doesn't hurt that bad <laughs> it's like you have to fall in to realize like, oh, that really wasn't that bad. It was like before I'd ever broken a bone, I always envisioned for some reason, because I was an adult when I finally broke a bone. For some reason in my mind, it was this unimaginable pain that lasted forever. Like, it, so I was so afraid of it, right? <laughs> and then when I finally did, I had like landed on my hand and I crushed my hand, right? And so I, I like fell skateboarding. I, I look at my hand, my fingers go in the other direction. And I look at it, I'm like, oh, no. I must have popped my fingers out of place because it, it didn't hurt that bad. So I grab my hand and I'm like, ow, nope, that didn't fix it. I got to go to the hospital. So I go to the hospital. I'm waiting in the, the um, urgent care. I don't go to ER. I'm waiting in the urgent care for half an hour. Eventually get to the front and they're like, oh, so what are we here to see you today for? And I like hold up my hand and they're like, oh my God, what are you doing? And I was like, I think I popped him out of place. And they're like, no, you did not. You need to go to the ER right now. And I was like, oh, okay. So like I go and and they're like, they wrap it up or whatever. And they're like, do you, you need any pain meds right now? Like, we'll give you a prescription anyways, because you're going to have to have surgery. And I was like, well, it doesn't, it's not that bad. And they're like, you should we'll just take some with you. You know, and then once it was like wrapped up and it started to swell, then it hurt. But the, the point of this whole story is I thought it was going to hurt so bad that I was so afraid of that my whole life. And then finally, <laughs> at like 21, that happened. And I was like, spraining my ankle hurt way worse than that. <laughs> like, it doesn't hurt that bad to fall, like in, in the majority of the situation, as long as you're not right. like gambling all of your savings in some kind of like penny stock scheme or something. But, but generally speaking, like what's going to happen? You try this TV show and they say no right. and you go, well, why? And then you find out what you messed up on. And then six months later, totally right. It, the fall wasn't that bad. Yeah. And, and I think that is, Again, it, we think these horrible stories and we focus in on the negative stuff because it, it shields us and protects us. But yes, yeah, staying in your bedroom and never leaving also protects you, but you're not experiencing the world. You're not living. Uh, so so the, the, the negative impact that hearing no creates or the negative impact of not getting what you want is far less impactful than you think. If anything, you have a bruised ego for about two days. Like, wow, they didn't want to buy my TV show. Woe is me. And then you go back at it again and you create something new or I broke my hand. Well, guess what? I have a sneaking suspicion your hand is healed. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're okay and you can function in the, in the world again. So I, I, I uh, you know, but now we can, we, this is great to talk about it. Okay, yes, be positive and yeah. saying the same thing. Honestly, though, if you're watching this, you're probably going to go back to the negative talk. You're feeling good, like, yeah, yeah, let's go, yeah. But now what? You're going to go, you're going to eat something, you're going to fall asleep tomorrow, you're going to get back in the rhythm. That's why it's so, so, so important to schedule time to think and schedule time to to research actual resources to learn about this stuff. Like, they, they, well, okay, we could talk and be positive. Well, how? Yes, we're not going to answer that question right now. We're not going to, we don't have, you know, seven days to sit here and talk about it. But there's tons of resources out there. There's books, there's videos, there's pod, there's pod, other podcasts, there's people, there are courses, there are, you know, um, things that you can actually get to help you do this on a consistent basis and that's the key yeah well and you don't it's not like you break through the one barrier and then you're golden forever it's like you you try this new thing you finally get yourself to try this new thing and you fall and you get back up and you succeed on this thing and if you're not careful like if you're not careful and you're not like trying to be intentional and aware self-aware of what's happening you'll find yourself as like oh well now this thing's not scary anymore and then you just stay in that space right <laughs> you know what i mean it's like that's why it's so important to constantly be checking in with yourself and constantly be trying to do new things and don't get complacent ever because you're you're going to get back to the same spot otherwise Always. that you were you know way before 
Dude, always. I, I do want to hang out like long after we record this anyways, because I'm hungry and I didn't drive three <laughs> hours to just record with you. Totally. But I want to get another story from you. So I think um, at this stage of your career, you have a lot of similar experiences and not very much phases you anymore, right? Because you've been around billionaires. Like you've been, you've done work with movie stars and you've traveled to all these countries and Africa, like you've been all over the place. What was, tell me a story about the last time something happened to you in your career that you were genuinely excited about. Ooh, wow. Uh, you know what? I'll, 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 I'll the first thing that, po- there's, a, there's a couple, I'm sure. Uh, the first thing that popped into my head um, was, so I have, I am an entertainer. I'm a mentalist and illusionist. So my gig and how I earn money is I travel around, I do a show, people hire me to entertain, you know, uh, corporate sales meetings, or I'll do a show at a theater and sell tickets. And that's how I earned my money. But in having conversations with people like you and engage, this is, this is not normal. Like this isn't part of my daily. My daily is you think of something and I figure out what you're thinking. So in having these conversations, um, it really inspired me to continue it because I found so much, um, fulfillment in, in telling like saying the stuff that's in my heart and in my brain and, and hopefully helping people. And I got invited to, uh, go to an event called gathering of Titans at MIT. And it was a room filled with people that are running the world. (laughs) Like these are all just super amazingly successful people. And they said, we want you to present your keynote. Uh, I call it the power and potential of the human mind. And some of the concepts we've been talking about are, are in that. And, um, they said after this, it's, it's likely going to really help your, your, your speaking career. So I'm like, oh, okay. You can can do more speaking. So I, I walked into this, it was a retreat that they do. And it was kind of like everything I've been uh, talking about. They were meditating. They were doing these things that were really impactful, uh, you know, uh, from being a human, um, and what I'll call self-help or growth. And it was exciting because I thought, you know what, this is an opportunity to get outside of just doing primarily entertainment and shift into helping people. And I'll tell you what, since that time, um, I have traveled around the world talking about the stuff we're talking about here on stages. And it really was super exciting because it got me out of my everyday element. Uh, I can, if you think of something, I can tell you what you're thinking. I've been doing that for 27 years, but now it's like, okay, wait, now I have an opportunity to not just entertain people, but hopefully change people's lives. And from that, uh, there are stories that have popped up. One guy told me he saw me do this keynote. He said, while I'm on stage, his his um, company, people at his company were texting him saying, hey, we just were in this meeting. We have bad news. And it's um, I won't name the company, but it, it's a major, major company that makes movie trailers for movies. And you've seen their movie trailers and you have gone to a movie because of their the movie trailer that they created to major movies. And he said, basically, we're not going to hit our sales quota and we're going to have to lay off basically the entire company. We're not going to be able to afford it. Um, and he said he saw my, my, my keynote and one of the things that I preach is yes, lives in a world of no, ask for no's. So the company said, yeah, we got to fire everybody. The company's doomed. We're done. We're, we got we to shut down. And he said, well, I just saw this guy, Wayne Hoffman. And he said to collect some no's. So here's what we're going to do. He said, I know you don't believe we'll make it. Uh, and we're never going to earn this money. He said, call all the clients we have and say this. Hey, I know we haven't done work in a minute. Um, I, times are rough for everybody. But if you happen to have some work, um, preferably sooner than later, if there's any work you can give us, um, we'd love to do it. Simple, right? So the, his sales team reached out to all these people. And the guy came back, he goes, hey, I got I got three no's. And he goes, but I got two yeses. And that continued throughout the company. And it ended up, they reached it, paid payroll, 
didn't have to fire a single company, and it saved this dude's company. And it's mind-boggling to think that one day I'm just going to be sitting maybe on my phone or something, and I'm going to watch a movie trailer that maybe exists because a guy saw me speak. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it saved the company. So that was so that's what I really got excited about. That shift from just mainly doing entertainment into now speaking. Um, because it's so wildly different than what I started. I didn't ever start to become a speaker. Um, so that was really, you know, a, a, just a totally just big shift in my world. Uh, and, and was exciting and still is. And it's because of me. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it was all those years ago when we sat down and you're like, wow, I'm good at this. And I remember listening back at it and I was like, He's good at this. Like, I don't even have to ask anything. He just carries the whole conversation. You're a riot. Dude. All right. Let's go get some food or something. Thank you so much for letting me interview you again. And thanks awesome. for just texting me out of the blue. This was of really course, dope, man. dude. I'm glad that I had the availability to just like pop over me too. here and do this. I love j uh, jiving with you, man. There, there, there's always good thought-provoking things that come up. I love it. Dude, if it's enough for you to come to Wisconsin and go, oh, yeah, that dude that interviewed me three years ago, I got to hang out with him and text him. Must have done, I must have done a good job. Yeah, see, he's the number one <laughs> podcaster in the world. It's true. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon. <laughs>